So today we are finding the greatest common factor, otherwise known as the GCF. So the greatest common factor of a set of numbers is the biggest number that divides into both of them. All right. So for example, 36 and 42, you kind of have to ask yourself, what's the biggest number that will go into both of these? I happen to know 6 is, because 6 times 6 is 36. 6 times 7 is 42, and there's no number bigger than 6 that will divide into both of them. All right? So it takes a little bit of thinking. It takes a little, well, you have to know your times tables. All right? Now, it starts to get trickier, though, when you have, when you have algebraic expressions that you're trying to find the greatest common factor of. So the easiest way to do this is to find the greatest common factor in pieces. For example, 4x squared and 10x to the fifth power. Let's start with just the numbers first, okay? So if you've got 4 and 10, what's the biggest number that divides into both 4 and 10? Well, if you think about it, 2 is, all right? Because 2 times 2 is 4, and 2 times 5 is 10, all right? Now let's look at the variable part. We've got x to the second power and x to the fifth power. What's the biggest number that goes into x to the second power and x to the fifth power? Well, you can think of x to the second power as x times x. You can think of x to the fifth power as x times x times x times x times x. So what do they have in common? Well, they both have an x times x in them. In other words, x to the second power is the biggest number that goes into x to the second power and x to the fifth. Because x squared times 1 gets me this, and x squared times x to the third gets me x to the fifth. All right. In other words, you kind of have to look at the variable part and find the one with the lowest exponent. In this case, it's x to the second power. And that is the one that's going to be your greatest common factor. Okay. Let's do another one, and this one's a little bit harder because there's two variable parts to it, all right? But our process is going to be the same. Let's break it up into pieces. Let's start with the regular numbers. We've got 12s to the fifth t times t to the third, and 40s to the eighth times t. So again, we'll start with the regular numbers. 12 and 40. What number goes into both 12 and 40? Well, I think it's going to be 4 because 4 times 3 gets me 12. 4 times 10 gets me 40, and there's no bigger number than 4 that goes into both of them. All right, now let's look at the variable parts. Starting with the s's. We've got s to the fifth and s to the eighth. All right, well, what's the biggest number that'll go into both of these? Well, since s to the fifth, that exponent is smaller than 8, I know s to the fifth is the biggest number that'll go into both, because s to the fifth times 1 gets me that, and s to the fifth times s to the third will get me s to the eighth. All right, so it's got to be s to the fifth. And finally, let's do the t's. t to the third and t with no exponent, which means t to the first power, really. So what goes into both of those? Well, it's got to be just t to the first power, or t, because that's our smallest power of t listed because t times 1 gets me t, and t times t to the second, t times t to the second will get me t to the third. So this is going to be my greatest common factor of these two numbers. All right, so go really slow with these. Go step by step. Find the greatest common factor of each piece, and then just put them together at the end. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, please hit that like button. Also subscribe because it really helps us out. But with that being said, good luck on your math, and I will see you next time.